we are ready for this next webinar about handheld positioning, how we position our hands on vocal microphones. Basically, the, um, the microphone is in a sound field um, every time we pick it up. Uh, unless it's in the lab, uh, there will be uh, some reflections. Reflections from the music stand, reflections, first of all, from your hand, from your face, um, but uh, also from the surroundings. If you are, let's say you are a piano player, um, you have the music stand right in front of you, you have the piano right in front of you, and that will reflect the sound of your voice as well. It will also reflect the sound of the instruments and everything else on the stage. So the sound into the microphone will be a sum of all these different angles. Sound from all angles um, are um, coloring the sound of the output of the microphone. So what we did in the lab, we had um, three different uh, subjects holding the microphones in, um, in five different positions. And one test recording or one reference recording was made without um, holding the microphone. Just a plain microphone without any uh, reflections from, from the hand. But still, we have reflections from the test person's uh, own face. Um, but that is the same on all of the recordings. So the only thing that changes from recording to recording is the hand position. These different hand positions, five different hand positions, or five different recordings, four different uh, hand positions, um, done with left hand and with right hand three times. So we get an average of the different positions from six different recordings. The average you see in the, the straight line, the, the solid line uh, from this position, the zero line, the straight line is without the hand. So what you're seeing here is the difference between the microphone um, recording without a hand on the microphone and um, a recording with a hand on the microphone. And you see with this position on the picture here, there's not much of a difference. It sounds pretty much natural. There are some small ripples um, in the higher frequencies, but they are hardly audible. It's above 3K, um, all these ripples. So it's it, this. we would consider this position here as a basic, a normal position. The recording of the microphone with my voice it sounds like this. While language can be something that groups of people have in common, the sound and character of the voice is unique from person to person. So it should be audible, but, um, well, maybe not on Facebook Live or maybe not on, uh, on headphones. Um, you, maybe you need to be in a lab. Uh, so the, odd, so the, the deviation from the, the recordings without um, a hand um, is very, very little. Anyway. We move the, uh, the handle, we move the hand on the handle, um, so it sits just beneath uh, the mic head. It gives a ripple with a higher amplitude compared to the lower position. Um, and it may be audible, it's very, very little. Um, listen to it here. While language can be something that groups of people have in common, the sound and character of the voice is unique from person to person. I don't know if you can hear the difference, but um, there is a little difference. Now it starts to take place, the differences. When we start cupping the microphone, we get some, some resonances around the capsule. How much it changes the uh, pickup characteristics is not a part of this experiment here. Obviously, on some microphones where you will be closing the um, the entrance to the to the back of the diaphragm, you would probably uh, create some sort of an omni microphone if you are cupping the capsule. 
but that's not part of this uh, experiment. If you look at, let's say, um, the uh, the vocal microphone from DPA, the, the 2028, it looks like this. Um, I have the ability to open it like this. Um, you see the the capsule in here underneath. We have the openings to the back of the diaphragm here. And you see, if you see them side by side, you see that even cupping it like this will not close these uh, holes here because they are way up, way up here uh, on the, um, on the, uh, the grill. So cupping it like this will not make an Omni microphone out of the 2028. But on some microphones, um, that might be the case. Obviously, the pickup uh, pattern will change because you are uh, adding reflections um, to the microphone by putting your hand there. But we have, as you see on this, we have resonance around 2 kilohertz. A resonance that is really audible. In one of the tests we made, one of the recordings, maybe you can see that it's a, it's a very fine line, dotted line. It's uh, plus 9 dB at around um, just below 2 kilohertz, like 1.8 or something. So that is very audible. It sounds like this. While language can be something that groups of people have in common, the sound and character of the voice is unique from person to person. So position number four. Um, now we are holding a, like a, a thumb over um, over the grill. Now the, the as before the resonance is around 2k, but the Q is now um, much wider, much lower, you could say. The peaks are not as high uh, because we're not cupping it quite as much as we were on the position number three. But still, we have some resonances. You think that you might not influence too much on the sound when you just hold the microphone on the lower side of the grill, but you are actually um, changing the sound quite a bit. It sounds like this. While language can be something that groups of people have in common, the sound and character of the voice is unique from person to person. And now for position number five. We are making a like a cavity around the uh, the microphone, and I will just assemble my my own um, microphone here again. I have the microphone here, um, and we are making like a, a small space in here. We are making a cavity in here. We are closing. I'm closing almost completely around the microphone and creating this this resonance. I can even I can even tell you like this. It should it should sound really um, like very very different from the un, uninfluenced uh, position, which is way down on the handle. Little more like this, little more like this, but doing like this that changes the sound dramatically. Back to the headset. Thank you very much. So that's uh, what we're doing in the recording in the uh, in the in the sake of the. A comparison, uh, you should hear the recording um, from the website. While language can be something that groups of people have in common, the sound and character of the voice is unique from person to person. Very audible. I am noticing a, 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 an extra peak around 10k, the dip just before around 8k. So a lot of um, a lot of ups and downs uh, in the uh, in the frequency response, which is um, obviously hundred percent impossible to compensate for. You can you can maybe compensate for um, for some of it um, if your singer insists on holding it like that, and you want um, you want it to be more natural sounding. You could compensate for some of it, but it requires quite some work. But um, this is not to say that it's wrong to do this. This is just a, um, a webinar about what is going on. If you have um, a singer that really likes the effect and likes that sound, 
uh, the, the, the two kilohertz boost, and he does that as an effect, then that's super cool. That's the way that it should be. Um, it's just nice for all of us to know exactly what are we working with, what is going on um, in real life when they are doing that, and, and what should we, um, where should we attack the EQ if it starts to create feedback, where, uh, where would the problem most likely be? Uh, basically, the, um, the conclusion is that anything you do around the microphone will create some EQ change, of course. The mouth, an open mouth even, will create some EQ changes. The, um, just the fact that the microphone is in front of your face and if you have an open mouth in front of it, that would change the, 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 the sound of the reflections. Um, and so everything around the microphone will, will change, um, change the sound. Reflections, again, from the instruments that you're working with. Um, if you have a music stand right next to you, you would have reflections from that, and that will influence um, on the systems. Uh, how the um, hand positioning will change the pickup pattern of the microphone. And I would say that uh, it, is, um, it is very different from from position to position because it's all depending on the um, on the reflections but that being said on some of the microphones as I said earlier if the ventilations to the back of the diaphragm are too close to the grill and you close the grill then you will base basically create an omni microphone out of it and of course then it will change the um, the pickup pattern dramatically so thank you for uh, for watching. I'll see you uh, later. Bye.